Hi, I'm Doug the Bee Guy, and welcome to the beginning beekeeping series. In this series, we're going to cover everything from A to Z that you're going to need to know on how to become a beginning beekeeper. First, we're going to talk about equipment. What you need, what you don't need, what you may need. Then we're going to talk about bees. We'll show you how to install your bees, depending on whether you get a package or a nucleus colony. And then we're going to show you how to manage them. We're going to do videos every week or two and show you the whole progression through the whole season. How to check for swarming, how to add more brood boxes or supers for honey. Step-by-step -step process, we're going to show you everything that there is to know. And we'll also show you how to harvest your honey in the fall and how to bottle it or package it and even sell it at the farmer's market. We'll show you all the steps that we do and all the things that I've learned over the last 10 years of doing this. And I hope that you're excited about learning to become a beekeeper. In this episode, we're going to talk about a beehive and all the different parts that are involved in a beehive. This here is a beehive and it's uh, made up of several different parts and we'll show you what they are. So on the very top, you have what's called a telescopic cover or telescopic cover. And it comes down over the sides and keeps the weather out. So that's your cover. On some hives, there's a, what's called an inner cover. Um, I don't use inner cover, so I don't have one, but uh, I can show you a picture of that, and I'll insert it here. And that's a common, uh, a common piece of equipment that comes. If you buy this as a kit from somewhere, um, I'll show you some places down in the comments that you can buy these as a whole kit. It's usually cheaper that way. They'll have an inner cover. Um, this first box is what's called a honey super. So this is where the bees will store their honey. And this second box is called the deep or the brood box. And this is typically where the bees raise the little baby bees and they hatch out and all that stuff that we'll show you. And this is where you'll install your bees. And this is kind of where um, they do all their work. Now, the very bottom is what's called the bottom board. So this is the very bottom of the hive. And then you put this bottom board on some bricks or a hive stand or some fancy version of a hive stand. We'll show you all that also, but this is just basically some hives have a hive stand built into the bottom board. You know, there's all varieties of equipment that you can uh, buy out there, but um, I make some of my equipment and I buy some of it. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a mishmash. So this is the bottom board and this is the deep brood box. And then inside this brood box, are frames. These are deep brood frames and these are nine and an eighth by 16 inches or 19 inches or something like that, the dimensions. So they're standard. All this stuff is standard. So if you're going to build beehives, you need to find out those dimensions and I'll give you that information and make sure that you build them so that all the standard equipment fits. Now, if you're watching this in a different country than the United States, you better check with your local bee people to see because the beehives in different countries are a little different and they're different sizes and uh, you don't want to make uh, one kind of hive for the wrong kind of frames if that's not what's available to you. So you want to make sure that you're making the beehives um, the right size for all the equipment, which is why I suggest if you're a very beginner, you probably should buy your first one and then you can use that one to determine what the measurements are. It's a little easier. You don't have to worry about getting everything right. And I find that it's just a little bit, uh, a little bit less stressful if you uh, start with one that's already made. So here's a piece of uh, comb that the bees built out. So this kind of frame is a wooden frame and you put a sheet of wax inside of it or you put uh, a popsicle stick or something and you let the bees build the comb naturally. And the other one that I just showed you is called a plastic frame and uh, you put some wax on here and the bees will build the comb right on this. And uh, I have a variety of these, black, white, yellow, it just depends on what's, uh, what's the cheapest of the year I'm buying them and I buy them in bulk. Um, I prefer the plastic frames. Um, I do have wooden frames um, that also have plastic foundation in them. So instead of this wax, they have uh, the plastic insert there. Um, the reason I like these is because you can clean them very easily. Um, I've had some for 
15 or 20 years because I bought them from another beekeeper. They were all messed up and all I did was power wash them and they became brand new. And so these are kind of indestructible unless you leave the black ones out in the sun for many years and the sun will kind of warp them. But other than that, there isn't a whole lot that can happen to these. Um, the wood ones are still pretty good too with the plastic, but if you just have this foundation here, um, there's a lot of things you have to do. You have to tie it so that it doesn't fall. Um, the mice can eat this wax and they literally can eat a big hole in it. And so there's some things that can happen to this. The wax moss can totally destroy it. And then you're left with a piece of wood that you have to put some more stuff in. If the wax moss attack one of these, then um, all you do is scrape it off clean it off, put some new wax, and you're ready to go for the next time. So that's just my preference, but like I said, that's a decision you're going to have to make. We're just going to go through all the equipment and show you what's available. So this Honey Super is considered a medium. Um, there is something called a, a short um, that few people use anymore, but it's just a little bit uh, shorter than this. I pretty much run deep brood boxes for my bees, and this is considered a medium for honey. Again, this has frames in it, and this is, uh, as you can see, the, the this is a plastic frame, and the bees have built that out very nicely. When you're starting out, you'll have... Uh, Frames like the one I just showed you, they don't have any wax or anything on them and the bees are going to have to make all that. But I don't have uh, any beginning frames like that. So here's a wooden frame that has foundation in it and the bees have built the wax. And uh, that's kind of the honey super. And so you have your telescoping cover, you put your inner cover on here. And you put this back on and that's kind of the basic simple beehive um, there are many varieties and many ways of managing your bees and we'll talk about the different management ideas and that's going to be something that you're going to have to decide and you'll probably have to find out depending on where you live in the world in the country um, and people do different things depending on where they live but the way um, that i do it is i pretty much manage my bees as uh, one deep and I put a queen excluder on and then I stack up as many supers as possible to get the honey maybe three four five depending on how good the season is and where my bees are and I let them fill that with honey I take that off in the fall I encap it I take the honey out and then I usually leave one of these boxes on top of this and that's kind of what I will overwinter my bees in because we have pretty good winters here in Northwest Indiana. So I'll overwinter them in one super of honey and one deep if I'm doing this configuration. Um, if it's a different configuration, which you can look at my other videos and see that I do side-by-side -side nucleus colonies, which is a whole nother subject, then I usually do two deep brood boxes. But for, for large hives like this that I uh, create just to make honey, I usually run them as one deep. Now, you can run them as multiple deeps, and you can do one, two, or three deep brood chambers, and then a queen excluder, and then a bunch of honey supers, or no queen excluder. So there's a lot of ways to do this management. I'm gonna show you the way that I think is the easiest for beginners, and uh, you can decide by looking at other people's videos and information online and the books that I'll suggest, how you wanna manage your bees. Um, I've been doing this, like I said, 10 years, so I have a lot of experience in the different management techniques. And as a beginner, you're going to just start out and kind of do something, and you're going to kind of see what works for you in your part of the country or your part of the world. And it's going to be kind of a uh, trial by error process. There's really no way to tell you exactly, um, you know, what kind of configuration is going to work for you unless you have a neighbor who lives right next to you that's doing this and he can kind of tell you but even that won't be exact because the reason is everyone's different everyone has a, a job or something that they do something that inconveniences them comes into the middle of the way they manage their bees and the bees don't stop for you they do what they do they build up they get honey they swarm they do everything on their own time and you kind of have to manage them in that time frame so even if you have a neighbor that does it a certain way let's say you work at home one week and then you're away every other week you travel 
Well, if that gentleman or lady doesn't do that, then the way they manage their bees isn't exactly going to fit you because you're going to be gone half the time and they might be one week they're doing something to their bees and you're gone and you miss that window. So that's why it's a trial by error thing. Everybody's got to learn how to do it just for them and their own personal timing and how often they want to get into their hives and all of that stuff. But I kind of got off topic. Really, we just wanted to talk about the beekeeping equipment today and what's involved in all the different pieces of the beekeeping unit, which is called a beehive. And this is it right here. So a couple other pieces of equipment that you're going to want to have along with your basic beekeeping unit are a hive smoker. And this is what we use to, we call it smoking the bees. And uh, we'll talk about what that does and why we do that. You're gonna want what's called a hive tool. We use this for prying the frames apart and the boxes apart because the bees glue it all together with something called propolis. And it's very sticky. And without a tool like this, you won't be able to get things apart. Another thing you're gonna want are some really good beekeeping gloves. You can use regular gloves, but you see how these are long and they go up. If you don't have the long things, you can wear a regular pair of gloves and the bees can get in here and they get under there and they get scared when you squish them and then they can sting you. So beekeeping gloves are a good idea and also a beekeeping suit. I'm already wearing my suit because I just came out of the apiary for managing the beehives today. Um, this is what's called a stingless bee suit. It's got three layers of material but yet the wind can still blow through it so it's not as hot. The bees can land on it, but they don't like it because their little legs get in here and the little fabric moves and they don't really like being on the suit. They pretty much won't sting through this. It's not a soft material like a white cotton where they can actually land and uh, sting you. I don't think I've ever been stung through this suit. You can get stung through some of the other bee suits, but not usually because by the time you smoke your bees and get them nice and calm, you won't have that problem. The main thing that you want is if you don't want a full bee suit, you definitely want some kind of a, what's called a veil. And uh, this one has an integral veil, so you just pull it up and zip it, and then you're, uh, you're protected. The bees can't sting you in the face, the lip, the eyes, the cheek, and that's kind of where the bees want to sting you because um, Bees see carbon dioxide, and they see the carbon dioxide coming out of your nose, your eyes, and your mouth. And so they see that, and they know to them you're an animal. You're like a cow, or a dog, or a bear. And so they are programmed to go right after that area because they know that if they sting an animal in that area, they leave, and they won't continue to attack the hive. So that's kind of why um, you really want a veil at the very minimum. Um, but I would suggest as a beginner, you have a veil, the full suit, and the gloves until you're more comfortable with uh, working with the bees. So when you get your bees to put in your bee new beehive, they're going to come in one of two ways. They're going to come in either a package with 10,000 bees and a queen, and the three pounds of bees are about 10,000 bees, and they'll be inside a box like this that's screened. Or you'll get what's called a nucleus colony. And these range from three to four frames of bees with brood, eggs, larvae, and honey um, on the frames. And so you can buy them like this, or you can buy them like this. And if you want to know more about the differences, I'll put a video up in the card that explains the differences, the pros and cons of both, and what I suggest um, that you get as a beginner. Well, I hope you enjoyed the first episode in the beginning beekeeping series. I look forward to your questions in the comment area. If you have anything at all that you want to know about, please put the questions down there so other people can see those questions. And as always, be extraordinary. Well, if you'd like to become a better beekeeper, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.